Welcome back, my frog army. I am your host, Combat Frog. So, we're going to be reading from more of Scary Stories You Tell in the Dark, book one. Um, this story is called The Haunted, I believe. Yes, The Haunted House. So, real quick, I got a new bookmark, guys. I thought that was cool. It came with two. Um, my wife has the other one. And I don't know where she put it, so I can't show you. But anyway, The Haunted House. One time, a preacher went to see if he could put a haunt to rest at a house in his settlement. The house had been haunted for about ten years. Several people had tried to stay, stay there all night, but... They always would get scared, uh, scared out by the haunt. So the preacher took his Bible and he went to the house. Uh, he went in to the building himself. Wait. Took his Bible and went to the house, went on in, bu okay, built himself a fire and lit a lamp. Sat there reading the Bible. Then, just before midnight, the f uh, just before midnight, he heard something start up in the cellar. Walking back and forth, back and forth. Then it sounded like somebody was trying to scream and got choked out. Oh, and got choked off, my bad. Then, there was a lot of thrashing around and strangling and struggling. And finally, everything got quiet. The old, the old preacher took up his Bible again, but before he could start reading, he heard footsteps coming up the, the cellar stairs. He sat watching the door to the cellar, and the footsteps kept coming closer and closer. He saw the doorknob churn, and when the door began to open, he jumped up and hurled, what do you want? The door shut back easy like, and there wasn't a sound. The preacher was trembling a little, but he finally opened the Bible and read a while. Right? Yeah. Then he got up and laid the book on the chair and went to middle, mend, mending the fire. Then the haunt started walking again. And step, and step, step, step up the cellar, up the cellar stairs. The old preacher sat watching the door, saw the doorknob churn, and the door opened. It looked like a young woman. He backed up and said, who are you? What do you want? Ooh. All right, there's more, but here's here's the image. Okay. The haunt sort of swayed like she didn't know what to do. When she... When she just faded out, the preacher waited, waited, and waited. He didn't hear any more noise. He went over to shut the door. He was sweating and trembling all over. But he was a brave man, and he thought he'd be able to see it through. So he turned his chair to where he could watch, and he sat down and waited. It wasn't long before he start before he heard the haunt start up again. Step, step, and it was right at the door. The preacher stood up and held his Bible out before him. And then the doorknob slowly churned, and the door opened wide. This time, the preacher spoke quite, quite like he said, "In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost." Who are you? And what do you want? 
The haunt came right across the room, straight to him, and took hold of his throat. It was a young woman, about 20, 20 years old. Her hair was torn and tangled, and the flesh was dripping off her face, so he could see parts of her bone and parts of her teeth. She had no eyeballs, but there was a sort of blue light, a uh, sort of blue light way back in the uh, in the eye socket, and she had no nose on her face. Then she started talking. It sounded like her voice was coming and going with the wind blowing it, with the wind blowing it. She told how her lover had killed her for money and buried her in the cellar. She said if the preacher would dig up her bones and bury her properly, she could rest. Then she told him to take the end joint of all the little fingers from her left hand and lay it in the the collection. Oh, the collection plate. Okay. At the next church meeting, and he found out who murdered her. Wait, at the next collection meeting, and he'd find out who murdered her. And she said, if you come back here once more after that, you'll hear my voice at midnight. And I'll tell you where my money is, where my money is hid, and you can give it to the church. The haunt sobbed like she was tired, and she sunk down towards the floor and was gone. The preacher found her bones and buried them in the graveyard. The next Sunday, the preacher put the finger bones in the collection plate. And when a certain man happened to touch it, it stunk it stuck to his hand. The man jumped up and rubbed the what jump wait yeah, it stuck to his hand. The man jumped up and rubbed this scraped and torn at the bones, trying to get it off. Then he went to screaming like he was going crazy. Then, oh, okay, uh, going crazy. Well, he confessed to the murder, and they took him to jail. After the man was hung, the preacher went back to the house, what, uh, uh, sorry, went back to that house one midnight. And the haunt's voice told him to dig under hard rock, heart ro hearth rock, he did, and he found a big sack of money. Lucky. And where the haunt had, where the haunt had held on to his coat, the print of those bony fingers was burned right into the cloth. It never did come out. Weird. Weird. So he found the money, but the the print of her bony fingers was burned into the cloth. Interesting. Well, that has been scary stories you tell in the dark. It is not dark, but we're telling them anyway. I am your host, Combat Frog. I really hope you enjoyed that video and that story. It was um, it was quite interesting. I still say that the White Wolf was better. Not a big fan of the haunted stuff, um, but it was still pretty good. Anyway, if you like this video, please comment, like, subscribe if you want. If you didn't like this video, I'm sorry. My reading it sucks. It is what it is, but I enjoyed doing it. Anyway, this is your host, Combat Frog, and I'm signing off.